So what we want to know is how do we know that a, a much larger sample size or a different sample size isn't going to make the mean, say, of 30 or a 20? How do we know it can be confined into a smaller range? So what we're going to talk about now is how this confidence interval goes about and the logic behind it. So again, we know that that sample mean can fluctuate by some amount. That amount, we're bounding, we're putting the plausible boundaries of that range, and we're calling this our confidence interval. And we want to know basically what those boundaries are going to be, how, how much our sample mean is going to fluctuate. So what I've got here is that 80, that sample that we were using with 80, actually comes from a much larger sample size of sus scores with a mean of 78. So this is acting as though we've got the whole population here. So there's about a thousand sus scores. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking samples of 15 users randomly from this population and, and graphing their system usability scale scores. Notice that sometimes it's above 78 and sometimes it's below. This one was 62.5. What we're seeing here is sampling error. Every single time it should be just 78. Sometimes it's below, sometimes it's above, but it's not going all over the place. It's actually staying within a pretty confined range. This is what happens after 100 times of samples of 15 and then this is what it looks like after resampling a thousand times and graphing the average. You're going to start noticing a very familiar shape there. We take a histogram of that shape and then it make the inferences of the normal curve. What we're seeing now is one of the most important concepts in statistics and this is the central limit theorem. It states that basically no matter what our parent population looks like, in this case this kind of funky shape here, as we take repeated samples from it, even from pretty small sample sizes of 15 here, the distribution of the sample mean will follow a normal distribution. And this is what's going to allow us to use parametric statistics from even small sample sizes, and it's with allowing us to have a confidence interval that falls within a boundary. This resampling exercise, which we just saw here, shows us that as we take repeated samples, it's not like the means all over here. We didn't get any sample means that were 30 or 40. They're falling within this range. So all the confidence interval now is going to do is describe what this normal curve would look like, which is how much the sample mean is likely to fluctuate. All right, let's try this in practice. Let's do uh, an exercise here when comparing two means. I'm going to go to the um, companion book, to the Excel and R companion book on page 144, example 4. This corresponds to pages 72 to 73 in the Quantifying the User Experience main book with the red die on it. And we've got an example of two CRM applications from a usability test where the old version took uh, here's times from the old version, and a different set of users did it on a newer version, and we've got uh, both those times. We're going to go to the calculator now on the home page. I've got this data in the Exercise 2 tab from the home page if you click on that, and you'll see uh, CRM V1 and CRM V2 um, put right there. Now let's say we don't know which test to use. We want to compare whether or not there's a difference between the two means. So uh, we're going to go to what test do I use? So the first question is always what type of data do we have? Is it continuous or is it discrete binary? Well task time data as you can see right there is continuous. It's a classic continuous measure. Start here. Are we comparing data? Yes, we're comparing an old versus a new. So we go here. Do we have different users in each group? Yeah, I have uh, independent groups. Different users that tried CRM version 1, different tried 2. Three or more groups? No. So we're going to the two sample t test, and this is the workhorse of uh, statistical comparisons. So I'm going to clear out any values that are in there, and Excel blanks out my um, clipboard, so I'm going to go back and get that, show you a different way to get there. This is under the compare two means, two sample t test. I'm going to paste it in, and we're going to find out, is there a significant difference? So I got graphs right away that show. I have a different observed difference of about 19 seconds. Then I come right over here to the p-values. These are the, the punch lines, if you will. I immediately get a p-value of 0.033, which is good. And if I forget how to interpret that p-value, I could just come down here and I could see, oh, there is about a 96.7% chance that the means are different. 
So that's good. The means are different. And then I, I also I see the confidence intervals. I see that there is some overlap. When we talked in the confidence interval section, I said it's sort of a one thing we can do with the confidence intervals is you look for statistical differences between um, two means. If there is a substantial overlap, then you can't conclude at this level of confidence that there is a difference. Now they actually can overlap by about as much of 25% as we see here, and they can still be statistically different. So this sort of illustrates the point of why I kind of call it poor man statistics. Confidence intervals are helpful when they're not overlapping. When they don't overlap, um, you can be at least 95% confident that there's a difference. But because they do overlap by some extent here, we need to do this two-sample t-test, and that's what's happening in the background, the two-sample t-test being what you do to compare two independent means. Other thing we have here is the observed difference, and there's the confidence interval around the difference. We could see it goes from about 1.7 seconds to 36 seconds. So again, it could be a pretty small or modest difference to a reasonably large size difference there as well. Um, we can change the confidence uh, intervals at any point, confidence level. I'm going to change that to, let's say, 90%. Notice how the only things that are going to change are the width of the confidence intervals. This does not affect the p-value. It's a common uh, confusing point that the p-value and the confidence level, while there's similar similarities between how we phrase those, they're unrelated. This just speaks to the confidence interval around the difference, and in this case, the confidence interval around each sample mean, whereas the p-value is the probability of obtaining a 18.9 second difference if we really were sampling from the same population. So those are two differences there. Um, other things that you can see down here are statements about um, effect size. Um, this is, comes from uh, Cohen's, uh, Cohen's D down there, and then you can see how the calculations are, are happening down at the bottom there. But that's our, our first example.